Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be discussing one of the most useful yet misunderstood properties in CSS. This is the float property. Floats are used to position elements on a web page and can be particularly helpful in creating multi column layouts. But there are some important considerations to keep in mind when using them. The float property is a CSS positioning property that allows you to position an element to the left or right of its container, allowing other content to flow around it. The floated element is taken out of the normal flow of the document, and other elements will adjust themselves around it. To use the float property, you simply add the float keyword to the CSS code for the element you want to position. You can then specify whether you want the element to float left or right using the left or right keyword. Let's see this in action. Following along from the previous videos, you should already have the index.html file set up to point to an external CSS file. You should also have an image folder with a few images in it. If you do not already have this set up, pause the video and take a moment to do so. I've also included links in the description where you can find the code and images to get you started. Also open Live Server if you don't already have it open. Next, in the index.html file, let's add some elements to the body. First, let's add an h1. Call this the float property. And let's add a div. And inside the div, let's add an image and point it to the images folder. For this one, I'm going to do the small game image. And then just for best practice, let me give it an alt here of small game image. Then next I'm gonna add a short paragraph, which I'm just gonna copy and paste. So there's quite a bit of text. There you go. Then I'm gonna add a second div. And here I'm going to add Im another image and this one also going to point it at the small game image. Give this an alt again of small game image. Then give it a class of float right. Scrolling down a little bit. Um, add another paragraph, and I'm also going to copy and paste this paragraph because it's a little bit lengthy. Add a third div, and I think I'm just going to copy and paste this image definition because I'm going to use it again. But this time, I'm going to give it a slightly different class. Float to the left. Then drop another paragraph in here. Right, let me add one more div. And I'm going to copy and paste the image again. This time I'm also going to, I'm just going to float to the right. And drop a smaller paragraph. For this last one, I'm going to demonstrate the clear, which, um, and give these paragraphs a read as you're copying and paste too, because they talk about a little bit of um, what I'm trying to do in each. 
So once you have a had a chance to do that, let's go over to the styles.css file and let's start styling this. First, let's give the divs some styling. Let's give them border of five pixels, solid blue. Some padding, 10 pixels, margin of five pixels. And for the float to the right, let's say float right. You can see this image here floated to the right and the um, paragraph moved over. So now I do the float left. You see, comparing this with no float, you see how the left appeared here and then the paragraph just kind of shifted over. While floats can be very helpful in creating interesting layouts, there are some important things to keep in mind when using them. One of the main considerations is that floated elements can sometimes cause layout issues when other elements don't behave as expected around them. To avoid this, it's important to use a clear property to ensure that other elements are positioned correctly. Um, if you'll notice back in the index.html, this last paragraph here had a class of clear. So style that paragraph using the class. I'm gonna say clear both and then what that did was it cleared the float even though the float the image is floated to the right the, the paragraph now returned to normal just like the top here additionally floats can sometimes cause issues with responsive design since the floated element may not adjust properly on different screen sizes to avoid this, it's a good idea to use media queries to adjust the float property as needed on different screen sizes. Don't worry if you don't know what media queries are, we'll cover those in more in depth in upcoming videos. And there you have it. The float property is a powerful tool in CSS that can be used to position elements on a web page. While it's a useful tool, there are some important considerations to keep in mind when using it. With some careful planning and attention to detail, you can use the float property to create amazing layouts that work well on any device. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the description for additional resources. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.